Thank you, Dean. Everybody hear me okay? So we've had uh, a couple of really nice seminars so far already today, and uh, what I'm going to talk to you about uh, primarily are some new technological innovations from, uh, from Humminbird and Minkota, and I'll spend most of my time talking about this system, which is called the iPilot Link System. Now, the iPilot Link System is really a, a new way of thinking about boat control. And no matter what you fish for, whether you fish for crappies or walleyes or bass or muskies, uh, boat control should really be one of your primary concerns, something that you spend a lot of time worrying about, because even as we heard today, if you think back to Brandon's seminar, boat control can be critical for optimum bait presentation. If you think back to Brandon's seminar for a moment, one of his little stories really was uh, really caught me, and that is that he talked about fishing a roadbed. And he wanted to have the back of the boat positioned in the deep water off the roadbed, but his bow, his uh, bow mount transducer being right on top of the roadbed, and having the boat be moving parallel to the road and using the boat as sort of a guideline for making his casts. Right? There's a guy who's spending a lot of time optimizing boat control. Now, if that were me, I can tell you that I would have a hard time having any brain cells left after I spent all my time getting my boat in the right position to now start thinking about what color should I be using? Should I be throwing a DT12 here or a DT16? Should I be casting, quartering a little bit because the wind is coming this way? What was the color of the last fish, I, or what was the color of the bait that I caught the last fish on and so forth? And so what the iPilot link system will do for you is allow you to spend more of your time thinking about those fishing related questions. How many meet the next, the next fish in the boat? And a little bit less of your time worrying about basic boat control needs. So that's the iPilot link system. Now, iPilot Link is something that is just coming onto the market right now. Uh, you're going to have the opportunity to, uh, to get into this system, uh, if not right now, certainly this spring sometime before, uh, before open water returns back to our part of the country. Now, iPilot Link is an integrated system that uses three components, or that, that unites three components. And those are Humminbird Fish Finders, that's sort of the heart of the iPilot Link system coupled with Minn Kota trolling motors. I've got a laser pointer here, so here's my, there's my Tarova up there on the front of my boat. Um, a couple of different kinds of Minn Kota trolling motors will operate and will drive the iPilot link system. Those are the Tarova and the PowerDrive uh, V2 motors. And those two, the Humminbird fish finders and Minn Kota trolling motors, operate in conjunction for one critical iPilot link function that we'll talk about in just a little while with Lake Master digital GPS chips. Okay, so by bringing together the technological strengths of Humminbird fish finders and Kota trolling motors and Lake Master digital uh, depth data, we now can bring a, we now can deliver a system that will help you uh, deal with basic boat control needs and spend more of your time uh, fishing. Now, who's used an iPilot system before? Who has an iPilot system on their boat? A few of you guys do. Now, iPilot is a, the, the basic iPilot system, the system that's been around for the last several years, is a GPS-enabled trolling motor control device. So this system allows, uses GPS data from the satellites that we're all sort of familiar with in terms of marking waypoints and so forth on our fish finders. It uses that data to perform some fundamental boat control operations. Okay, and one of those, and probably one of my favorite ones, is the spot lock function. If we activate the spot lock function using an iPilot system, whether it's one of the ones that's currently available or the new iPilot link system, that, uh, that spot lock feature will, will use the trolling motor to hold our boat within a user-defined area. Typically, we think about that being somewhere between 5 and 20 feet of the GPS location that we, that we mark using the spot lock feature. Spot lock is an electronic anchor. Right? So if you're a river guy, you sort of get tired of chucking your anchor into the water and repositioning yourself five times along a wing dam or five times along a current break. Well, you don't need to chuck your anchor in the drink anymore. Spot lock will handle a lot of those situations for you. Uh, the spot lock system, whether it's, a, whether it's a current one or the iPilot link system, also has some nifty navigational tools. One of the things it allows you to do is record a GPS-defined boat track. You're on a trolling run in open water on the lax. You want to 
record your path along your favorite weed line on your lake here at somewhere in western Wisconsin. While we track record and track playback features, iPilot Link will allow you to record your boat's path and then repeat that path over and over again with GPS accuracy. So again, so you can spend more of your time fishing and less time worrying about how your boat is going to meander along the productive path. There's also a GPS-enabled autopilot feature that actually will plot a series of GPS targets that your boat can follow as, uh, as the uh, system takes care of all of your steering. And then finally, the uh, sort of the, the last basic uh, boat control feature for any iPilot system is called cruise control, and that's really a speed control issue. So if you're a troller and you want to be able to make sure that you pull your slow death rigs at 0.8 miles an hour, you can dial in your speed on your iPilot system to follow, to follow whatever path you want at 0.8 miles an hour, and instead of worrying about increasing your prop speed, decreasing your prop speed based on current or wind or anything like that, the iPilot system will manage your speed for you uh, and allow you to spend more of your time worrying about catching guys like this. Now, the iPilot link system does all of that and more. Okay? It's going to perform all the basic iPilot functions that you're probably familiar with and enhance them in really significant ways based on integrating trolling motor control with the Hummingbird Fish Finder and visual GPS data from LakeMaster. So I like to think about the iPilot link system as being improvement by integration. We already have a great set of fundamental boat control tools available to us with iPilot. Now we're going to integrate those tools with our Hummingbird Fish Finder and Lake Master Digital GPS data. So we're going to be, uh, this integration allows us to not only control those basic iPilot features with our Fish Finder, but we'll see that there's ways that we can enhance those features as well by tying a trolling motor together with the fish finder. And beyond this, the control and enhancement of these basic iPilot features, we also have a raft of new navigational tools that were never possible before without this integration of trolling motor control into the fish finder. And those include something called GoTo. We'll refer to the GoTo navigation function several times later on in the talk. We'll look at follow the contour, this really sexy way of using Lake Master data to follow a predefined GPS uh, determined uh, contour at the bottom of the lake, uh, and as well as something called Backtrack. I don't know if I have time to cover, but we'll certainly cover these other navigational features that are, again, unique to the iPilot link system that go beyond what is currently available in other iPilot systems. <clears throat> Now, at the heart of the, uh, of the iPilot system is the remote, the handheld remote. Many iPilot functions can be controlled with the iPilot link remote, as well as with uh, the fish finder that we talked about before. And now, the remotes themselves are bigger because the, the, the uh, LCD display on the remotes have gotten much, much larger. They're full color, they're brighter, they're a lot easier to read, particularly in direct sunlight. We can access almost all of the iPilot link functions or features using the remote. So you don't have to control the system with the, uh, with the fish finder. You can control a lot of those navigational and positioning features using this new remote. Uh, one of the reasons for the redesign of the remote is that uh, the remotes use a rechargeable lithium ion battery. The charge typically will last about a day, or if you have enough power in the remote to last about a day, but the systems also are provided with uh, the ability to charge the, uh, to recharge the remote right there in your boat if you have a 12 volt you know, cigarette outlet uh, charging system or charging opportunity somewhere there in your boat. You can keep it charged right there in your boat, and that's what I do when I'm out there on the water, is I just keep it plugged into my boat all the time so it's always at full charge. The remote itself is tough as nails, it's, uh, it's waterproof. Um, I'm told that it flows, but because I had one of the only demo systems that was available in the country last summer, I was kind of afraid to throw in the water just in case the factory was wrong. Uh, but I'm told that it floats. Certainly the old iPilot remotes float, and I know that I dropped my remote seven in, the, in the drink several times over the, last, uh, over the last few years. And it's rubberized, and so it can withstand a little bit of abuse. One of the things I encountered, and you may have encountered if you've used an iPilot system in the past, is that one of the things I would do is I'd, I'd key or key, I'd, I'd operate a key or I'd push a key on my remote and then I'd chuck the remote sort of out of the way so I didn't step on it or something like that. Well, chucking the remotes 
tended to be bad for those sorts of things. But I haven't had any trouble uh, with this remote as I've chucked it out of the way up onto the dash or up on the way so I can step on it while I was fishing. So that's a little, that's a look at how we might be able to control some of these features using this handheld remote. Now, I want to go through some of the iPilot um, bow control tools now. I'm not going to go through all of them necessarily. But I want to show you how we've taken some of those basic iPilot bow control tools and improve them and enhance them by tying the iPilot system together with the Hummingbird Fish Finder. Now, the first one is the spot lock function. Remember, this is the electronic anchor that uses GPS data to hold your boat within a user-defined area on a lake or river. We can access the spot lock function in one of two ways. Of course, we can use it, we can access it by remote. There's a, there's a key on the uh, iPilot link remote to be able to activate the spot lock function. It looks like a little anchor. You're probably familiar with it if you've used the iPilot uh, system in the past. Uh, doing so uh, on the remote gives us a little cartoon. You probably can't see it all the way in the back, but it says spot lock active right there. There's a little picture of my boat uh, with an anchor associated with it. So that tells us on the remote that a feature has been activated. But not only can we access this uh, spot lock feature by the remote, we can also access it using the fish finder. And I'll show you some slides in just a moment of how we can activate different kinds of spot lock functions while we're sitting at the comfort of our wheel and our walleye boats and activating uh, the spot lock function. Now, we can do, so we can access this feature through the remote or through the fish finder. And one of the things that struck me immediately when I started using the system last summer is I don't no longer have to wonder about where all my spot locks are. In previous versions of the iPilot system, we were limited to three or six different spot lock locations, and all we had to operate on was a little memory location that the remote would flash. You're storing this spot lock location in memory spot A or memory spot B or something like that. We didn't really know where A and B and C were relative to where we were trying to fish. Now, because we can integrate trolling motor control with our fish finder, now we can actually display all of those spot lock locations right on the chart that we're using for navigation. So here's a view of a, uh, of a wing dam that's down there by Wabasha on Pool 4. And you can see I've got three different spot locks that are marked here on the front face of this wing dam, the upstream part of the wing dam. And I got another one marked here on the downstream side. My spot locks all show up as if they were waypoints on my fish finder. They're designated as being spot locks because the first two characters there are SL. And the little icon that shows up is an anchor. It's very intuitive. Here are three spot lock locations that I can set and come back and use simply by pushing a button. Right? If I want to fish out here towards the channel, or if I'm fishing out here towards the channel, I want to come back and fish a little closer to shore. I don't need to lift my anchor up. All I need to do is push a couple of keys on my remote or on my fish finder, and the boat will automatically navigate to that other spot lock location and hold me there once I get there. Now, the uh, previous versions of the iPilot system, as I said before, were limited to three or six stored spot lock locations. But now, because we're tying the trolling motor control into the fish finder, I can use the benefits of having essentially a computer on my boat to store more data. Right? And so now, uh, with iPilot Link, I can have 2,500 different spot locks stored on my fish finder. So I don't need to worry about clearing my spot lock locations when I go from one lake to the next to the next. I can have a whole library of spot locks for Lake Wasoda and a whole library of spot locks for Pool 4 or Mille Lacs or whatever. And those are always there waiting for me to reuse when I go to all those different locations. Now, one of the other things that's great about tying the, um, tying the iPilot system into this computer on your boat, your fish finder, is that we can use the fish finder to operate spot lock in a couple of different ways. And this is uh, these are ways we can activate spot lock using the menu system of the Hummingbird Fish Finder. One way would be sort of the equivalent of pushing the button on the remote to lock your to lock your position at the whatever location you happen to be at, and that's called spot lock at vessel. So let's imagine that you're cruising along, you've got your trolling motor deployed, and you run over something that is just too irresistible to not stop and fish. You run over a crib on Lake Wasoda that's loaded with crappies. You pass over a currency on Pool 4, and it's just loaded with fish. You go, well, I can't drive past these things. i got to stop here and fish. Well, what you can do once you see those fish 
is at, through the menu structure of the fish finder, just press spot lock at vessel, select that. As soon as we spot lock at vessel, we transmit our GPS coordinates from the fish finder up to the trolling motor, and the trolling motor goes, all right, you want to stop here and fish? Let's do that. And they'll turn you around and immediately start spot locking you on that current location. Now, we don't run over every pot of fish we want to be able to try to catch, right? Sometimes, maybe if we're using hummingbird side imaging, we see structural features or pods of fish at places that we haven't driven over. Okay, well, if we want to go back and mark those locations as spots we want to come back and fish in the future, even if the future is just five minutes from now, we can use a new function, again, that's only possible by integrating trolling motor control into the fish finder, that's called mark spot lock. And so, instead of just going and dropping a waypoint on something that looks kind of promising that we've identified by side imaging, now we can go and drop a spot lock on it. Right, so I can mark a spot lock at a place that I want to come back and fish later, and then use my navigational tools, like the go-to feature, to be able to go and navigate right over to that location and hold myself in that spot where I'm trying to fish it. Now, one of the things that is, uh, is also new in terms of uh, boat control and navigation with iPilot Link has to do with uh, tracks, recorded tracks. Now, in previous generations of the iPilot system, we were limited again to three or six recorded tracks. The tracks could be two miles long. We had no real way of knowing where our tracks were once we started, once we recorded them or started playing them back. With the iPilot link system, we can record or play back a track using either the remote or the fish finder, just like in Spotlock. Um, but one of the things that's really cool about uh, the iTracks, now that we uh, have iPilot link, is that we don't need to record the tracks with the trolling motor deploy. So in other words, if I want to go and uh, do a high-speed search routine out in the deep nowhere in Mille Lacs, and I want to try to find pods of fish that I can come back and troll through later, well, a really, uh, a really uh, easy way to do that, or a really um, sensible way to do that, is to run the boat at high speed, 5, 10, 15, 20 miles an hour, with the trolling motor still up, up on your bow, not deploy the water at all, and record the track that I want to later come back and fish. Well, I can do that with iPilot Link. I can record the track with the trolling motor stowed up there on the boat, and then later come back and follow that track with the trolling motor deployed. Now the eye tracks that we record in iPilot Link, just like the spotlight locations, are displayed right there on the chart for us. So I can see exactly where my track is relative to structural features, relative to other tracks that I might have recorded or something like that, because it's all displayed right there. And that's only possible because all of those features are now integrated into this computer on your boat, the Hummingbird Fish Finder. Now, beyond those kind of basic fundamental iPilot operations, we have some new navigational tools that are available to us, and one of those is called the GoTo feature. Now, when I had my first training session on iPilot Link, this would have been back last June, one of the engineers from the factory said, yeah, all we're going to do is press the GoTo button on your fish finder. And I said, wait a minute, I don't know that I have a GoTo button on my fish finder. He said, you sure you do. It's just something that's sitting there that you've never used before, you've probably never used before in your Hummingbird Fish Finder. Now we're going to turn on, we're going to activate that button and show you exactly how we can use it. Now, the Go To button on your Fish Finder and a, and a similar Go To button that's going to be on the iPilot Link remote are going to allow you to navigate to any point on your screen, whether that's a saved data point like a waypoint or a spot lock or a track or something like that. Or it can even be something like the cursor location. Right now, I, when I was up getting my, uh, my iPilot link training, this would have been up in Brainerd last year in June, or I think it was in late June. Uh, once we got done with our training session for that day, uh, the guy I was fishing said, with said, watch this. And he took the four-way arrow key on his fish finder, and he cursed it over to the boat landing. And he pressed go to. And you know what happened? The rover turned and went right to the boat landing. And so while we were going to the boat landing, Put away all of our gear, sorted our crankbaits, do whatever else we had to do. All of that data navigation took place with, with one input input from the user. Right? And that was saying, I want to go there and press the go to button, and away we go. Okay, and again, that level of navigational expertise or that, 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 that navigational feature is only really possible 
by, by integrating together the trolling motor with the fish line. So we can navigate to any point that we select on the, on the fish finder. We can also string a chain of points together to make a navigational route that we want the boat to follow. Okay, I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Now, uh, here's one example of using the go to function. We can go to a waypoint. Any waypoint that I have stored on my fish finder can now become a place that I can navigate to using the go to feature. So think of all the waypoints you have for places that you caught fish, the most productive tree in the back channel and pool floor, something like that. Now you can simply press a button and use the throw to navigate right to that spot. Okay. From the hummingbird, we can activate the go to feature by either cursoring over to a waypoint or selecting a, a waypoint from a list of nearby places that the fish finder thinks you might want to navigate towards. Or we can do something similar using the iPilot remote. We can simply press go to on the remote and a list of nearby waypoints will appear. We select the one we want to go to and boom, off we go. Okay. Now, as we navigate to a waypoint, the user is allowed to control the speed. So let's imagine you want to get there right now. Or you can dial up the speed to 10 in your Trova, you go there as fast as possible. Like my boat is 3, three, two, three, three miles an hour or something like that. Not to mention you want to fish your way over there. Right? You've got a big productive weed bed between your boat's position and the waypoint you want to go to. Dial your speed back to 1 or 2 on the prop. Make that travel that path, that bipedally defined path, at 2 tenths or 3 tenths of a mile an hour. Fish your way over there. Okay, so you have the trolling motor speed being controlled by the system, you have the navigation being controlled by the system as well. What does that allow you to do? Fish, right? That's why we're there in the first place. We're not trying to find the best, we don't have to worry about finding the best way to get from point A to point B. My pilot link will take care of that. You can focus on fishing. Now, once we get to that waypoint that we're navigating to, you have some options about what you want the system to do once you get there. Okay? Let's imagine that the waypoint that you're navigating to is your favorite tree to catch properties from on pool floor. Okay, well, what maybe, maybe what you want to do once you arrive at that spot is enter spot lock. Well, I want to navigate there, and then I want to stay there for the next three hours and beat up every foot-long crappie that's hanging around that tree. Well, one of your arrival options is to go into spot lock mode as soon as you get there. Right? So you can go and start beating up on those crappies as soon as the boat settles into the appropriate spot. Another, another arrival option is to simply turn the motor off. Let's imagine that you're up on the mud flats on the last, and one of your waypoints is up on the northern tip of one of the mud flats, and you've got a nice northerly wind, and you want to be able to drift down the flat and rig the whole edge of it. Well, you can navigate right to that waypoint and then turn the motor off and let the boat just drift downwind while you focus on fishing, right? So you can focus on getting your rigs all tied up as you're navigating to that spot, turn the, one of the arrival modes is turn the motor off, and then start fishing as soon as you get there. Um, a third arrival option is to simply keep the prop going at whatever speed you use to get to that waypoint. Okay, this might be something that would be appropriate for a troller. If you have a string of waypoints that you want to navigate from one waypoint to the other, but troll your way all the way over there, once you get to the waypoint you're navigating to, the prop can stay on at, that whatever, at whatever speed you have it set, so you don't worry about the prop turning off and if you're pulling lead core, all your baits dropping down to the bottom and getting snagged and muddy and all that kind of stuff. Right? So, three arrival options. Spot lock, turn the motor off, or keep the motor on at the current speed. Those are all things you can do using the go-to waypoint feature. You can also go to a spot lock. In many ways, iPilot Link treats spot locks as if they were waypoints. The only difference between them, actually there are two differences between navigating to a waypoint and navigating to a spot lock. One difference is that iPilot Link assumes that if you're going to navigate to a spot lock, that you want to get there right now. Because those fish are leaving. If I don't get there this instant and catch them, they're going to go away. So what iPilot Link does is dials your speed all the way up to 10 when you're trying to navigate to a spot lock. Because it assumes that you're interested in going to the destination, not in whatever fish might be happening between your boat and your ultimate destination. The other thing that happens when you go to a spot lock location is that there are no arrival choices. Spot lock says, well, their iPilot link says that if you're going to a spot lock location, I assume you want to stay there. So it has one arrival option, one arrival mode, and that is to go in the spot lock as soon as you get to that spot. 
Now, as I said before, and I apologize for these being a little bit washed out, is that you can select spot lots from the graph. So you can sit there and look at your chart and say, well, here's my array of spot lots around the swing dam. I'm interested in fishing on the one that's at the very tip. And so I can either use my cursor and cursor right over to that waypoint and say, yep, that's the spot lot I want to go to. Or I can get a list of nearby waypoints generated by the system and pick the one from the list that matches with the spot lot location that I might happen to see displayed on my chart view. Okay, so we can select that spot lot location from the fish finder. I can also select it from the remote. If you're right there on the bow and you want to change positions, you don't have to run back to your console graph and go, oh, damn it, which one of those spot lot locations is the one out there by the tip of the wing hand? Oh, I see it a list right here on my remote, and the one that's on the tip must be the one that's closest to me since I'm almost at the tip anyway, so I'm going to select that waypoint or that spot lot location and go right to it. Okay, so we can choose those spot lots from the fish finder. Again, only possible by integrating trolling motor control into the fish finder or by using the remote if that's more handy for you. Now, when I started uh, using the system myself this summer, I thought one of the coolest things available was, my, was the ability of the system to build a navigational route. So, start thinking about how might a person use this ability to construct a navigational route to your advantage. Well, let's imagine that you are like most people and you spend a little tiny piece of your work day sitting there and dreaming over a map on the company dime, right? So if you're sitting there looking at a map, let's imagine, again, if we're going up to Mille Lacs and we're going to cast for muskies up there in the northwest corner up there by Garrison, right? And you want to go and you want to plan a route around Garrison Reef. So you want to make sure you hit your favorite little nooks and crannies, the place where you saw where you dumped the 55 inch last year, the place where your buddy's been seeing a tank over the last few weeks and things like that. So you can sit there and plot out GPS coordinates for all the places you want to make sure you hit on Garrison Reef. Well, using iPilot Lake, we can take that sequence of, of, of uh, GPS positions, either spot box or waypoints or whatever, and string them together to build a navigational route. It's really no more difficult than selecting the first waypoint, and then selecting the second one, and then selecting the third, and then selecting the fourth, and so on. Input all that information into the iPilot Link system, select the speed that you want to navigate that route on, and press go. That's it. Okay. So if you're up there on the northwest corner of Mille Lacs, and you got a terrible bear of a southeast wind poured in there, the iPilot system will still follow your navigational route, as long as, of course, as long as you provide enough power for it to do that, right, to beat the wind or beat the waves or whatever. But it will trace your route precisely with GPS precision around that structural feature. Again, so you can spend your time worrying about fishing. Right? You have to sit there and fight the trolling motor and figure out what the pedal is and what speed you need to go from one part to another. All of that is taken care of for you with the iPilot link system. And these are just a couple of examples of little routes that I built up on my home lake up north. And so this one has one, two, three, four, five different uh, places. Here's my original location shown in green, my first destination waypoint here in blue. And then as we navigate that route, these legs that are plotted out as my projected course end up disappearing as I cover them as the boat moves along that navigational route. Now, uh, the thing that may really change the way uh, guys really get into the walleye trolling game is another new feature which is called Follow the Contour. Now, Follow the Contour is the one navigational tool in the iPilot Link system that requires a Lake Master chip. Okay, now you may have a Lake Master chip already in your current unit. Unfortunately, that Lake Master chip is not activated for using the Follow the Contour feature. So you'll need a new one for a new 2013 Lake Master chip. Excuse me. Um, now, we're going to use that Lake Master data to access this new feature called Follow the Contour. And really, it's no more difficult than looking at a contour map for your favorite lake. This happens to be up there on the Chatech chain of lakes. Taking your cursor on your fish finder, pulling your cursor over to the contour you want to follow, and pressing Go To. Okay, that will tell the system, I want to go to that contour. It's going to give you some choices along the way, and we'll take a look at those in just a second. But it really isn't any more challenging than using your cursor, selecting the contour that you want to follow, and then pressing go. The system will pull you over to that contour, and then follow it in the direction that you want the contour to be followed. Okay? 
right? So, and once we get to that contour, as I said before, we have the chance, the opportunity to select whether we follow it in one direction or the other direction. So here are a couple of screenshots about how this works. So here's a boat position out here in a little circle. I've selected this 10-foot contour and pressed the go to key to activate the follow the contour feature. Now when I do that, it colors the contour in two different colors, and again, I apologize for the lousy color here. One is orange and one is yellow. Here's the orange part of the contour, here's the yellow part of the contour. It's basically asking me, once I get to the contour, do you want to go the orange direction or the yellow direction? Right, so there are two different options. So in this case, I selected the orange direction, I want to go north in this particular view. So the system will pull my boat over to the, uh, to the contour and then immediately start following it. And of course, I can follow it at whatever speed I want. So if I want to pull slow death, I can go at three times, four times, five miles, you know, five times a mile an hour. If I want to pull cranks, I can dial my prop speed up into the twos and follow that contour all the way around the lake. If that's what I want to do, right? Or I can follow the contour for a little while, stop, and turn around and follow the opposite direction. If the fish are all loaded up on that contour, I want to stay on. This is what the remote display screen will look like when we're following the contour. This is the one feature of the iPilot system that you need to activate from the chart because there's no way to display a chart view and select a contour on the tiny little LCD screen on the remote. So you have to do that from the, from the fish. Now, bass guys and musky guys who do a lot of casting, I think, will really like this feature of follow the contour, which is called contour offset. A contour offset will allow you to follow a contour on your map, on your chart, at a predetermined distance. Okay? And the really cool thing about this is that it defines the shoreline as the zero foot contour. So let's imagine you want to, you want to follow the shoreline all around your lake, and you want to follow it at one and a half cast distance away from that, from that contour, from, away from that shoreline. Well, we can select the shoreline. Let's see if I can go back a slide here. We can select the shoreline as the zero foot contour and say, I don't want to follow that contour. I want to follow that contour 50 feet away from it. So I'm outside of all the docks and within easy casting distance of all the silly largemouth that are up there on the shore. Right? Easy enough to do with the contour offset feature. You can follow a chosen contour line, whether it's the shoreline or any other contour that happens to be on your map, and follow that at whatever distance you'd like. And of course, you can define that distance using the menu structure of the, that's present on the fish finder. If you, want, if you want to make sure that you are following the 15-foot contour, but you want to be a little bit inside of that, that's no problem. You can select to be in, on the inside or interior of the 15-foot contour, or you can select to be a certain distance away from another target contour. So it's a way of fishing a depth without having your boat being positioned directly on top of it. Now, as I said before, I started to talk, I think the real fundamental benefit for any of the iPilot systems, and in particular the iPilot Link system, is that it can take your attention off of basic boat control operation, whether that's navigation, speed control, position control, or spot lock, or something like that, and spend more of your time, devote more of your attention to fishing. I don't know if you guys know this, but I guide, I got a raft full of kids at home, and so whenever I'm in the boat, I'm here with a client, a good friend, or one of my kids. Now, when I'm with a client, a good friend, or one of my kids, I have to spend a lot of my time worrying about putting them in a position to catch fish, okay? Or helping them deal with the situation they have. Undoing a tangle, which is like my kid's favorite thing to do, right? Is get their rods all wrapped up in each other. Or unhooking a fish, like my daughter's holding three nice copies from Cool Floor right there. Right, well if I'm gonna, if I need more time, need to devote more attention to doing all those things for clients or good friends or my kids or something like that, I can turn over a lot of my basic boat control operation, a lot of my basic boat control tasks to the iPilot system and allow me to focus more of my time on the reason I'm there, right? Which is to catch fish or to see the smiles on the faces of my clients or my kids or my guests when they catch a nice fish as well. Now, you might be in a position where you're saying, well, you know, it sounds really great, but these only work with electric steer motors. And I'm a bass guy. 
And I use cable steer motors, darn it, because those are the best kind of trolling motors to have, right? I hear that argument all the time. Okay, I'll, I'll say two things about that. One is that there, as this system rolls out, there are more and more bass guys who are seeing the potential benefits of using this, maybe not as a primary trolling motor system, but as something they can put on their boat when they have a particular structure fishing situation that they know they're gonna happen to be in. So they might, might think about that as well. Now, when I was up in Brainerd uh, doing some iPilot link training this summer, I had the opportunity to fish with, uh, with this guy. Probably most of you recognize, right? This is Al Linder. I had a chance to fish with Al for a couple of days and, uh, and film some of our results for a TV show that's going to be on one of his series here coming up in the month of February. Al Linder is a more dyed-in-the-wool cable steer guy than probably 90% of the people who think they are cable steer guys sitting in the room right now. Okay? When we put this iPilot link system on a Tarova on Al Linder's boat, his first reaction was, yeah, I don't know about that. You know, I'm sure. I sure, I sure like my maximum, my cables here. After about a day, and he had a chance to process all the things we had talked about in our little introduction and process some of the things we saw in the water, Al was pouring over his fish finder going, you know, there, there, there are chances for us to do this. We can really use this tool to do this because it's going to make all the boat control issues so much easier we can focus on casting this one sixty inch that we've been trying to get on, on tape for the last three years, or whatever the case may be. Okay? So if you're a cable steer guy, fear not. There are lots of cable steer guys around you who are going to start thinking about making the transition to a system like this on an electric steer motor because of all the benefits that it provides you in the face of moving from that cable steer system to an electric drive system. Okay, so um, that's really just a very brief introduction to the iPilot link system, and there are more opportunities for you to learn about it. Okay, one of those opportunities is through the dealership right here. Okay, Skeeter Boat Center is going to offer on the water demos for the iPilot link system as well as Humminbird 360 imaging, which unfortunately I don't have a chance to talk about today because I'm out of time. Uh, anytime you'd like to. So if you're interested in seeing those technologies, Call Dean, call Justin, call one of the other guys here at the dealership, and they will, they will do an on-the-water demo for you so you can see those technologies um, in action. Uh, you might also consider uh, checking out my website, jasonhelfandoutdoors.com. I've got a whole library of free Humminbird, Nakoda, Lake Master articles and videos there that will help you learn more about this technology as well as some of the other technological innovations from Johnson Outdoors. I have a free uh, e-newsletter that I'm writing this year. And uh, you, you're welcome to sign up for that. I'll have some sign-ups in the Hummingbird um, and the Coder room over there uh, where we just had lunch a little bit, a little while ago. You can sign up for that. You'll get a free newsletter delivered to your email inbox once a month to learn more about these and other new technologies that are coming out uh, from Johnson Outdoors here over the next uh, little while. And I also administer the iPilot link page on Facebook. So if you're a Facebooker, you might uh, check us out over there and see not only some of the things that I've done, but other iPilot link users have done as they put their systems on their phone. Thank you for your time and attention. Thanks for coming today. Uh, I'll be here for the rest of the day. We'd be happy to answer your questions that you have about iPilot link or on Humberbird 360 imaging. Thank you.